Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be all about my eyeshadow palettes part two. So this is also known as the eyeshadow palette tag. It was originally created, I believe last year, it seems like forever ago, by Allie Glines and Samantha March, and I really love both of their channels. I did participate in this tag last year. I did do the original tag, and then I actually did a round two of just a bunch of different questions but similar to this tag so this is technically my part three but officially it is part two of this tag created by Samantha March and Allie Glines and I haven't done content like this in a pretty long time so I was really really excited when I saw everyone do this also you've probably already seen this video from a ton of other people obviously it is a tag so people tend to catch on with it and i really wanted to do it because i was just really excited by the prompts and really excited to sort of pull back out some palettes from my collection and it was really fun to choose the palettes for these prompts so let's just go ahead and get straight into it so the first prompt is your all-time favorite palette and this was a tricky one because I tend to rotate through my palettes pretty quickly or pretty regularly. I don't stick to one palette for like an extended period of time usually but when I look at my eyeshadow palette collection and the amount of usage I have on each palette for me my all-time favorite palette I think would be the ABH Sultry palette. This, I feel like, is the palette that has gotten the most amount of use in my collection. It does have two pans, two pans that are really visible. This shade Twig does kind of have a pan, but it's like a needle pinpoint type of pan, so you can't really see it. But I did also get this on Mercari, so it was secondhand. It had been used when I purchased it, so that's probably also why it looks a little bit more used. Even though I have used this a ton, it wasn't all just from my usage. But I do tend to stick to usually this half of the palette. I don't really dip into these really deep tones or this coral very much, but I do really, really love these metallics in here. And I think that's why it has to be my all-time favorite palette, mostly for the metallic shades in here. I do obviously really, really love this palette. I think it's great for every day, and it is the more cool neutral tones that I do really, really love to wear. The next prompt is a palette that is a new favorite and this one was tricky because I don't bring a lot of new makeup into my into my collection let alone new palettes. Last year I was on a no buy so I purchased no palettes at all last year and I don't know if this is cheating but I did purchase some single shadows at the end of the year during the Black Friday sale so for a new favorite, I wanted to mention all of my Terra Moon shadows. So these ones are JD Glow, so we're not technically looking at these. I do also really love those for a different reason. But what I want to talk about are the Terra Moon shadows. And this one is missing because it is currently in a project pan, so it's in a different palette. But I love these Terra Moon single, single shadows. As you can see, they're all metallics and all sort of glittery, beautiful shades. It doesn't even do them justice just seeing them here in the pan. Even swatching them out, you can't really see the amazing shifts that you can see in person. So you really have to look at these in person, but they are so beautiful and so amazing. I like to use them as lid toppers, but I also like to build them up to get a really intense look. And I find that you can use some of these as a really pretty one and done type of look. But obviously some of them are like really light iridescent shades. And then I also have a little bit deeper shades that have a little bit more of a base pigment to them. So I kind of use them for different purposes. The lighter ones I will use more so as lid toppers. And then the deeper ones I like to do sort of one and done looks. and make those sort of the main event of my look, if that makes sense. So I just really love these Terra Moons single shadows. I don't know if that's cheating because it's technically not a palette. I mean, I kind of made them into a palette, but I didn't really have anything else to mention for this category and they are still eyeshadows, but I haven't bought a new palette in or in all of 2021, I haven't bought a new palette and there was nothing that really stood out to me. 
The next palette is a palette that you're keeping for the memories and I think this is one of the oldest palettes in my collection, if not the oldest palette. This is the Violet Voss and Laura Lee palette. This is my Pan That palette for this year. I haven't made much progress on it, but I do have a few pans in here. This is another palette that's also very loved and definitely used a lot, especially when I first got it. And this reminds me of taking a trip to Canada. I was born in Canada, so I am originally from Vancouver, Canada. And I remember taking this palette with me. This was also one of the first high-end palettes that I ever purchased. And obviously it is a little bit of a larger palette. And I just remember falling in love with this formula. And these shadows were so beautiful and still are so beautiful. I really, really love the formula in here. The metallic shades are really metallic and they're not necessarily glitter. They're not like lid toppers at all. They're more so of that very rich metallic formula. And the matte shades I really, really love as well. I feel like they're super easy to blend and they're really easy to work with as well. So I really, really enjoy this palette and I do still love it. So I'm not necessarily keeping it just for the memories. While this does have memories attached to it, I am keeping it still for the color store and because I do really love this formula. There just were no other palettes in my collection that I felt like I was keeping for the memories because I feel like I don't really do that. I don't keep products for memories really. I keep products to use them so if I'm not going to use them I will end up decluttering them but this is just a palette that has the most memories attached to it for me and I believe this was also the palette that I mentioned in last year's tag for I think it was like a palette that has the most memories attached to it or something so I'm pulling this one back out for a similar prompt. Next up is the most underrated palette and a lot of the palettes and makeup in general in my collection are recommendations I get from YouTube and Instagram and social media platforms so I don't have a lot of products that are underrated or that aren't really hyped up very much because I do get recommendations from places like YouTube. But one that I did think of that used to be hyped up quite a bit when it first released, but I feel like I never hear anyone talk about these anymore. These are the Kaja Trios. This one specifically is in the shade Toasted Caramel. I do also have Rose Water, which is a little bit more pinky, but I like this one a little bit more. I actually really like both of them, just depending on what type of look I'm going for. But this top shade is a really pretty metallic gold shade. And then you have, you have like a light, medium, and deep shade basically. And this is so beautiful. These are more so lid toppers but you can use like specifically the deeper shade as like a one and done shadow and it's really beautiful. I use the lightest shade mostly as a lid topper but you can also build it up to be pretty intense and I like doing a whole look with just this palette so it'll be obviously an all shimmer look but I'll put the deeper shade on the outer corner and then the lighter shade on the inner corner just sort of making a gradient with these and I really really love the way this look turns out and I think these are beautiful lid toppers that are just never talked about about anymore. So I do feel like these are a little bit underrated, especially now because I feel like those lid topper type of shades definitely came back in style a little bit. And everyone was sort of raving about those lid topper type of shades when I feel like this is a great product for that. It just wasn't really hyped up ever besides when it was first released. The next palette is a product that is not your favorite, but you can't get rid of. And for this one, I was initially going to mention the Dose of Colors Marvelous Mobs palette, which you guys know if you've been watching my channel, I haven't gotten much use out of that. It is a five pan matte palette, but I do really, really love the color story and the formula of that. So it is definitely a favorite. I just don't use it enough and I neglect it a little bit but this one from Marc Jacobs is definitely one that is a lot a lot more neglected in my collection probably one of the most neglected palettes in my collection because I haven't used this very much at all and this was one of the first more high-end eyeshadow palettes that I got. This is the shade Scandalust so it is a really neutral color story and these are beautiful colors. I don't know why I just never reach for this. Maybe it's like the shape of the packaging and I don't know. It just doesn't stand out to me in my collection for some reason. I used this a little bit when I first got it, but when I first got it, I wasn't super into eyeshadow, so I didn't really know what I was doing. So I definitely need to pull this one back out and get some use out of it. 
because this color story is definitely very, very beautiful. And I would easily use all of these shades in here, especially for every day. So I feel like this is one that has gone sort of neglected in my collection. But if I actually take the time to reach for it, I feel like I would really fall in love with this. So this is not a favorite, but I just can't get rid of it because it is like luxurious and very high end. But I do also really like the shades in here. I just haven't reached for it for some reason. I think it's just the packaging is just different and it doesn't really stand out to me for some reason. It just kind of gets lost in my collection. The next palette is your favorite collab and this was probably the easiest prompt for me. That has to be the ABH and Jackie Ina palette. I really, really love this palette. It is almost like a very toned down rainbow palette in a way. And it doesn't necessarily look like a rainbow palette, but there's definitely some more unique shades in here that I don't have elsewhere in my collection. And I just love how this almost forces me to get outside of my comfort zone. While I can get a really natural everyday look with some of those neutrals, there are definitely definitely ways this makes me branch out especially with like this purple and red shade and these other purples and pinks and even this like green shade right here it's like one of those shades that has a deeper base to it and it's sort of a green shift it's like a green brown shift and I love all of the shades in here for the most part. I mean, I don't reach for this red very often just because I don't wear those types of shades, but I love the formula of all of these. And I love just how these shades look together and how this forces me to create looks I maybe wouldn't create with another palette. So this definitely gets me outside my comfort zone, but in the best way possible. And I have really, really loved every single look that I've created with this. This is another one that I have to pull back out because I definitely used it a ton when I first got it, but I haven't used it in a while. And this definitely has to be my favorite collab palette. Next up, we have my 2021 favorite. And remember how I said I didn't purchase any palettes in the year of 2021, which is true, but I did get gifted one palette at the beginning of the year. I believe it was for Valentine's Day and it is the Pat McGrath Divine Rose Palette and it is upside down. This is my favorite palette in my collection, I think, especially for every day and not even for every day because you can still get dramatic looks out of this, but I really, really love all of the shades in here and it was a gift, so it does kind of mean more to me because of that, but that doesn't take away from the quality and the beautifulness of this palette. I just really fell in love with all of these shades and every single shade, every single look I create with this palette. I do really, really love and I find in a way this helps me sort of branch out in that I feel like I can use some of these metallic shades in my crease and maybe use them a little bit differently than I would use other metallic shades in other palettes. So I just really, really love the formula of this. Is it worth $125? Not necessarily, but I would purchase this again for $125. So in that sense, I guess I am saying it is worth it, at least for me and for this color story. It really depends if you think you are gonna use all of the shades in here. But I do really, really love every single shade in here. And it does give a little bit of variety in that this one is a little bit more peachy gold. This one is a little bit more gold. It does lean mostly pink cooler tone and mauve tone though. And this is the most beautiful lid topper, just glossy, wet looking shade. This is probably my favorite shade in my collection in terms of like lid topper glittery shades. So this one is definitely my 2021 favorite. And even though it is pretty much the only palette I brought into my collection in 2021, it did really end up being my favorite and just exceeding almost all of my other eyeshadow palettes. Next up is a palette that I did not expect to love, and this was a difficult one to choose, but I decided to go with my Colourpop, ColourPop Element of Surprise palette, and this is not the original Element of Surprise. I did get this in a BoxyCharm, and we all know BoxyCharm products just kind of naturally go to the grave to die because you just feel like they're not going to be very good quality or you're not going to like them because they're in BoxyCharm. So it's not necessarily like worth it in a way, but I did end up really loving this palette. And this is actually now a mixture of obviously the element of surprise It is mostly those shades, but it also has my favorite shades from the Sweet Talk palette, as well as the Kathleen Lights 
and ColourPop collab palette. I forget what it was called. It was like one of the Zodiac palettes. But this is mostly the element of surprise, like I said. Like this used to be, this was a hot pink shade, which I switched out because I just never wore it. I think a couple of these are different, but it's mostly element of surprise. And I do really, really love it. As you can see, it's obviously a very neutral, everyday wearable palette, which I think it just didn't look appealing because it did have that hot pink shade in this spot right here. So it just kind of threw the whole thing off for me. But when I actually used it and put it on my eyes, I do really, really love it. And obviously I don't technically have like the original palette anymore, but this was one that definitely surprised me and that I didn't really expect to love. And I feel like because obviously I am very conscious of my purchases, I don't purchase a palette expecting not to love it. So there wasn't really any other palettes in my collection that fit that category, but this was pretty much like the only one that did, even though it's not the original palette anymore. Next up is a palette that sparks joy. Again, this one was a very difficult one because I am very conscious of my purchases. I feel like a lot of my palettes spark joy, so I could have had multiple different answers for this one, but ultimately I decided to go with my Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette because first of all, this sleeve is beautiful. This is just the sleeve that the palette comes in. And then when you pull the palette out, it is really sleek and minimal, which I really love as well. So you kind of get that detail with the sleeve, but then the actual palette is very minimal looking, which I do really like that. And in here, I feel like it is a pretty large palette, but the pans are pretty big as well. I feel like they could have saved some space, but that doesn't really bother me very much. I don't really mind that. But also the shades in here are so beautiful. This was a palette that I was craving to have in my collection for a really long time. And I finally purchased it, I believe from Poshmark or Mercari. I don't remember which, but it came basically brand new. And I have gotten a lot of use out of this. I love every single shade in here. And obviously it is a more neutral palette, but you can get some more colorful looks with like this orange and purple and these berries down here as well. So I love all of these shades and I love this formula as well. So I feel like this is one that definitely sparks joy just because I remember wanting this for so long and finally getting it. And I also just love sort of the aesthetic of this palette as well. So this is definitely one of the top palettes in my collection that sparks joy along with a lot of the other palettes in my collection. And then we have the newest palette to my collection, which I have bought a palette in 2022 so far. The only palette that I bought is the Essence Dancing Green palette. I made an Ulta order and I will obviously sort of update you guys in my no buy update on my purchases, but I have been wanting this palette for a while and I had also wanted to try some green shadows. So I figured this was a really good inexpensive way to try some green shadows and just see if I like the way they looked without spending so much money on like a higher end palette. So I decided to buy this. It was I believe like four dollars and I may have even gotten a discount on it. So it was very very inexpensive. This is the least expensive palette in my collection by far. This isn't the most green palette but I figured it would give me sort of that it would fulfill my thirst for some green shades in my palette or in my collection. So obviously this is like the main green shade that I was really excited for. And also this one right here. I did use it on my eyes the other day. I believe the last videos you saw from me, I did have this palette on my eyes. So obviously there's like a really easy transition shade, which is fine and good to have in a palette. And then you have like a more highlighting type of shade, which I also like because that kind of completes my look. So I only need this palette to complete a whole look. I don't really need to dip into anything else. And then you have this shade right here that's a little bit more gold, but it's like a green gold. So I would like to use this on the lid by itself. I've only done one look with this so far. And I put this shade pretty much all over my lid. It looked a little bit more blue than I was hoping or thinking it would. And then I sort of put this on the outer half of my lid and obviously deepened it with this matte green. And then I just sort of tapped this more gold shade on top, which didn't add much, but I wanna try using this gold shade alone by itself on the lid. It did turn out a little bit more blue than I had hoped. So I feel like this isn't like the most green palette. It's sort of like a blue green palette, which I was a little bit disappointed by, but I had also been wanting to try some blues. So 
it kind of worked out in that way that I got to try some more out there type of colors that I haven't really put on my eyes before, but I would still like to draw, try some more like true green type of colors, but I do enjoy this palette, at least from the one look that I've gotten out of it so far, but I just need to play with it a little bit more because like I said, it does lean a little bit more blue than I was hoping. And then lastly, we have the first palette that you used in 2022, which was a difficult one to figure out because I am panning quite a few eyeshadows at the moment. So I am dipping into sometimes four different palettes to make my look. So I kind of landed on my Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. This is another one that I really, really love, one of my favorites in my collection. And I'm currently trying to pan this shade right here, so I have been dipping into it just as an all-over lid shade quite often. Like I said, I'm panning a bunch of shadows right now, but I'm also panning some singles. So I kind of remember doing a very minimal look with a matte single shadow that I'm panning and then just putting this all over the lid. I'm not sure if that's the first look I did in 2022, but around that time that was like one of the main looks that I was doing and I am panning a few single shadows so I would tend to reach for those single shadows and then also reach for this palette. So I believe this was the first palette that I dipped into in 2022. I could be wrong but the other one might have been the Pat McGrath palette which I already mentioned. Or like I said, my singles, which technically don't count as a palette. So I have been using this palette quite a bit in the beginning of 2022. And I'm still currently using it because I'm trying to pan this shade right here. So I think I'm pretty sure this is the first palette that I reached into at the beginning of 2022. And that is it for all of the prompts. I really, really enjoyed picking all these palettes out and sort of talking my way through them as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if you participated in this tag as well because I definitely want to go check out your guys' videos. But if you did enjoy this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I do post new videos about three times a week, so if you want to see more from me, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified every time I post. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.